computer numerical control. That is what we're talking about today, and that is what we actually call a CNC machine. But oftentimes people refer to this as a CNC machine, when in reality, this is a CNC router. There's CNC plasma cutters, CNC lathes, lasers are CNCs, and 3D printers are actually CNC machines as well. Today we're mainly gonna be focusing on the CNC router and the terms behind that itself. But now this video is really geared towards the brand new CNC hobbyist, and hopefully by the end of this video you have a much better understanding of each one of these terms. CNC bits and router bits are often referred to as honestly the same thing. What you wanna make sure you do not get is a router bit that has a bearing on top. This isn't gonna interact with your material very well. Oftentimes you'll hear bits like this being referred to both as an end mill or a router bit. Both of those are perfectly fine. This is a bowl bit and it is three quarters of an inch in diameter, but as you can see, it's got these little radiuses on the corner so that it leaves a nice bowl shape when it's done cutting. Also, you need to be aware that this is a quarter of an inch shank, so when you're looking at purchasing new bits for your CNC machine, make sure that the shank size is matching up with the size collet that you have on your machine. This is a two fluted down cut spiral bit, and this is the workhorse of my CNC. This is a great bit because when you use it, it cuts downward, giving you a really clean top surface. This is a 1 8 inch down cut spiral bit, and it's really good if you're looking for some detailed cuts. And this is a 60 degree V cut bit, and this is really great for engravings. This is a V bit. It's basically just a router bit with a pointy end. Here's the basic shape I want to cut out. Notice how it's got a point on the end. Normally with a round end mill, you can't cut anything with a sharp edge like that. And here's a quick simulation. Notice how that blue line is the path that the bit is going to take. It goes up at a diagonal. And there we cut it out, and you can see we have a sharp point at the end. That's the basis of V carving. Now I'll do something a little more complex. We'll cut out a fancy font, letter R, and you can see how that adds so much using the V-carving technique. This is an upcut bit. Upcut bits are good for giving a smooth bottom surface because it actually pulls the wood fibers up. However, it could leave a rougher top surface that may have to be sanded off. I typically use upcut bits when I am creating pockets. And again, upcut, it's going to pull the material up and out of the wood up towards your rotor. Down cut's going to push the material down, give you a cleaner cut on the top, and then a compression bit. As long as you're working at a depth into the um, transition or beyond, um, you're going to take advantage of both. This is a surfacing bit or a flattening bit, and it is often referred to the largest diameter bit that you can safely fit into your collet to be able to level your bed or even your workpiece itself. The reason that you try and get the biggest possible is just to save time on the operation itself. So this is an inch diameter bit, but if you were to use a half inch diameter bit for a flattening bit, it would take twice as long. What do we mean by the bed? Well, simply put, the bed is basically the cutting area of the machine. On the woodworker model of the Onefinity, it's 32 inches wide by about 32 inches deep. Two definitions that can easily get confused, homing and probing. Homing is basically how you tell your machine where the physical router is in relation to the entire area. Conversely, probing is how you tell your machine where the material that you're working with is in relation to the X, Y, and Z. So what's your X, Y, and Z axis? Typically, your X axis is going to be left to right, whereas your y-axis is going to be top to bottom. And your z-axis is going to be either the top of your material down, or it's going to be from the top of your wasteboard and then go up. But your z-axis is this direction right here. You can move left and right, or the x-axis a set amount. You can move the y-axis a set amount in inches or millimeters, and you can go up and down the z-axis in inches or millimeters. With a rotor machine, you still have the same X movement, or left and right, in inches, millimeters, up and down, or Z, but instead of the Y, we have an A axis that rotates. In this instance, 180 degrees. All you really need to know about the term milling is that it means cutting. If your machine is on and your bit is interacting with the way that it is cutting your material, you're milling. Toolpath. Toolpath means well, exactly what it sounds like. It's a path. It's the journey that your tool, or in this case your router bit, travels through time and space, cutting your part. Toolpaths are basically instructions that tell the CNC how to move. They're programmed in CAM software and saved as G-code, which is interpreted and executed by the machine. So what is G-code? Simply put, it's just a list of commands that our CNC machine has to follow to know how to actually cut our piece. Right here, we see the beginning G command. 
Then we see our beginning X position, Y position, and Z position. Then it simply follows those directions and moves from one location to the next. You can actually manually type out your own G code if you're up for that kind of torture. The question is, how do you get from design in your head all the way to cutting it out on the CNC machine? There's three basic software steps you have to take. The first is called CAD, Computer Aided Design. Pretty much everyone's heard of that and understands the basics. You're designing a project on the screen, anything from just a basic square to a full 3D landscape, all done in CAD. The next step is called CAM. CAM looks at the image you created with CAD and converts that to tool paths that your CNC machine will eventually follow. CAM will save that as a G-code file. Once you have that G-code file, you'll take it out to your machine and the post-processor or CNC software will read that file and it will move the CNC around to cut out that shape you designed earlier. So it's CAD for design, CAM for tool paths, and post-process for running the machine. This right here is the controller, or the brains of the machine. It's the actual computer that is controlling the machine. Now you might have heard the term controller for these. These are game pads, joy pads, whatever you want to call them. But this is an accessory for the machine, and this is a necessity for the machine. So what are feeds and speeds? Well, simply put, feeds and speeds represent the rate at which your machine is moving through your material relative to the speed of the bit in terms of revolutions per minute. When your feeds and speeds are set incorrectly, oftentimes you'll run into chatter or even breaking the bit itself or unfortunately your machine. In order to identify chatter, oftentimes it is very easy because you can audibly hear it, but also visually you'll be able to see very small divots along the toolpath. Plundrate describes how fast the machine will lower a bit down into the material. It's basically the z-axis equivalent of feed rate. Actually, that's exactly what it is. Plunge rate can vary depending on the type of bit you're using, the material you're cutting, spindle speed, and the depth of the cut. Offset refers to the difference between the machine's default home position, where the x and y values are both zero, and the xy datum that you set for your job. It's really useful if you have permanent stops set up on your wasteboard so that you have a constant reference point and you always know where your material is going to be. The offset is a known value that tells the machine where your material is located in the cutting area. So let's go ahead and talk about depth of cut and step over. So depth of cut represents the amount of material you are going to remove in the vertical direction or how deep you are going to cut into your material. This is usually measured in some sort of absolute value in terms of inches or millimeters. So you might want to cut an eighth of an inch deep into your material. Now by contrast, step over is the amount of material you are going to remove left and right rather than vertically in your material. And so step over is usually measured in some sort of percentage of the diameter of your bit. So for example, if you have a quarter inch end mill and you have a 50% step over, you are gonna remove an eighth of an inch of your material on one side or the other. The term nesting just simply means getting the most out of your material. The process of nesting is making sure that all of those vectors fit in here nicely and that everything can get cut out. That can be individual parts like this, or you can have parts that fit inside of a part. It's really just making sure that you're getting the most out of your material. So what is a vector or a vector graphic? A vector graphic is simply a graphic or an image that's created using a series of lines and points. Vector graphics are typically scalable, which means that they can be blown up or shrunk down with zero loss to quality or information. Commonly, vector graphics are saved as SVG files, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. Contrast that with a bitmap graphic, which is made of pixels, where if you zoom in real tight on a bitmap graphic, you can see all the pixels. They're really not usable in CNC work and must be converted to vectors. Now the collet is this little sleeve right here that actually accepts your router bit. On hobbyist level machines like this, you often put in a palm router, and that's just going to have a very standard collet. This itself is the collet. It is the piece of metal that is holding your bit when you're actually tightening things down with your wrench. Now, when people talk about an ER20 collet, they're normally referring to the spindle version of this router, which is bigger and more powerful, but also can handle bits up to half of an inch, where this can only handle bits up to a quarter of an inch. ER20 collets are also the most commonly used in the hobbyist space when it concerns ATCs, or automatic tool changers. So every single time on this machine when I need to change a bit for my operations, I have to manually go in and change the bit. But for an automatic tool changer, the machine does that itself. This is a brushed motor. It uses brushes that contact 
uh, the shaft of the motor and that's how the electricity spins the motor. This is an induction motor, so essentially energizing magnetic fields uh, is what causes the motor to spin. This is a handheld trim router and it's typically meant to run for about 15 minutes or so uh, while you do typical, you know, round over edges on something or whatnot. Really not designed to run for hours on end, but there are only two bearings on the shaft, one at the bottom of the case and one at the top. This, on the other hand, is meant, because it's an induction motor, this spindle is meant to run for long times um, at a clip, and this model has four bearings in its shaft, and so that's gonna create uh, less vibration or run out, you might call it, and um, again, would, would be better suited for long-term running, you know, so four, six, eight hour jobs. When you know you need to tram your machine is if you're doing a surfacing operation and you can feel between the two different passes that are next to each other, any kind of a ridge and, or drag a nail across it, then you might have to do some work. If you don't have that, then your machine is set up and you're ready to go. But if you are having trouble and asking for uh, some advice or assistance, uh, using this as the perpendicular uh, representation between the router and the bed, what you want is that router to be perfectly perpendicular to the bed. Um, if it is out in one direction or another, you would describe being out of adjustment fore and aft would be called nod, forward and back. If it was out this way or this way, that would be tilt. And so if you were having an issue there, those would show up in different ways. Um, you'd have lines going this way or lines going this way if it's out in one direction or another. A huge thank you to everybody who took the time to send in video clips so that we could put this video together to hopefully help people in the future who are just getting into the CNC world and be able to understand the many terms that are associated with it. And if you're somebody new in the CNC world and there's some stuff that maybe we didn't cover that you'd like to be covered in another video, please put that down in the comments below because if there's enough of them, we'll be making version two of this as well. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you all have a good one. Bye. This is where the magic happens. Which, oddly enough, if you're going by the definition of bed, is also where the magic happens. Hmm. So what are feeds and speeds and why do they matter to you? Well, simply foot. Simply foot. No. Freaking crows.